using ethno, whether it's people different from me, nationalism, populism, is a very dangerous threat to democracy, not just in America where we're seeing it play out, but in the whole world, in the context of a fight between democracy and autocracy, our, our not our, not mine, but the version of populism, ethno-nationalist populism, which tries to bring down education and fake news, the, the media, which is a protector of democracy, that version is contributing in countries other than our country and is a danger to democracy. We think democracy is on the ballot in America. It's a, ba a victory that we must win because it will only make matters worse if they have another stay at, at what they're doing to the courts in our country, the, the fear that they're instilling in jurists in our country, the suppression of the vote in our country, the role of their big, dark, rich, billionaire donors who don't want to pay taxes, suffocating the airways from the fossil fuel industry and the gun industry and the rest of that. So money yeah, her net and, worth like, and what, populism, quarter of a billion dollars? sadly, have gone together with this ethno-nationalist, anti, what they call elite, which we call education, free press, and the rest. So I urge you to think in terms of the word. It says it's a threat. You're going to deny that it's a threat to democracy in the versions that have emerged, that have emerged in America so clearly? And why does everybody here say to me, what happens if he gets elected? Well, you can't let that happen because for us, this election is Washington crossing the Delaware. Before COVID, intelligence services colluded with big tech to have Trump suspended off Twitter. Yes, the same platform which hosted the Taliban and Ayatollah Deaf to Israel Khomeini, they thought the president crossed the line when he tweeted on Jan 6th, quote, remain peaceful, no violence, respect the law, and our great men and women in blue. That's a quote. You may be thinking now that Trump is a populist. You are right. He didn't accept the 2020 elections, and he should have. So should Hillary in 2016, so should Brussels, and so should Westminster in 2016, and so too should Congresswoman Pelosi, instead of saying the 2016 election was, quote, hijacked. Quote, hijacked. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. What about the mainstream media? Let me read you some mainstream media headlines. The New Yorker the day before the 2016 election. The case against democracy. The Washington Post the day after the election. The problem with our government is democracy. The LA Times, June 2017. The British election is a reminder of the perils of too much democracy. Vox, June 2017. The two eminent political scientists say the problem with democracy is voters. New York Times, June 2017. The problem with participatory democracy is the participants. Mainstream media elites are part of a class who don't just disdain populism, they disdain the people. If the Democrats had put half their energy into delivering for the people, Trump wouldn't even have a chance in 2024. He shouldn't, he shouldn't have a chance. You've had power for four years. From the fabricated steel dossier to trying to take him off the ballot in both Maine and Colorado, the Democrats are the anti-Democrat party. All we need now is the Republicans to come out as the pro-monarchist party. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, populism is not a threat to democracy, but I'll tell you what is. It's elites ordering social media to censor political opponents. It's police shutting down dissenters, be it anti-monarchists in this country or gender-critical voices here, or last week in Brussels, the National Conservative uh, Movement. 
I'll tell you what is a threat to democracy. It's Brussels, D.C., Westminster, the mainstream media, big tech, big pharma, corporate collusion, and the Davos cronies. The threat to democracy comes from those who write off ordinary people as deplorable. The threat to democracy comes from those who smear working people as racists. The threat to democracy comes from those who write off working people as populists. And I'll say one last thing. This populist age can be brought to an end at the snap of a finger. All that needs to be done is for elites to start listening to, respect it, respecting, and, God forbid, working for ordinary people. Thank you. All right, so we've got this article on the desk.